NASCAR fans to welcome back your United States Air Force Thunderbirds and to deliver the most famous words in motorsports at the Daytona 500. Please welcome this year's Grand Marshal, the 45th President of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump, accompanied by First Lady of the United States, Melania Trump. NASCAR fans, today we dive into a unique intersection of politics and sports. We're talking about former President Donald Trump's memorable visit to the Daytona 500. Not just the Daytona 500 race after he was elected the President of the United States of America, but even his presence at the race many years before. As per many videos and photos on the internet, he was seen at Daytona 500 from 1999 to 2000s. Can you guess who the former president met hours before the driver's tragic end on the tracks in 2001? You got that right, the iconic Dale Earnhardt. Buckle up as we explore the spectacle, the reactions, and the impact of this event on NASCAR fans and the broader sports world. Before that, do subscribe to the channel, and for more in-depth analysis, subscribe to the newsletter. On February 16th, 2020, President Donald Trump made a grand entrance at the Daytona International Speedway, marking one of the most high-profile presidential visits to a NASCAR event. Daytona International Speedway, we love our country, and it's truly an honor to be with all of you at the great American race. Gentlemen, start your engines. The president didn't just attend as a spectator, but participated actively. He took a historic lap around the track in the presidential limousine, famously known as the Beast, right before the race began. But this is truly an historic first. A sitting United States president pacing the field for the great American race. He said he wanted to do a lap. He's going to do it. And are the drivers excited about this? Well, here's Clint Boyer's radio. Can you still pace the field? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Gosh, it's awesome. You know, are you jealous of those competitors out there? Today, right now, I am. I would love to be in this Daytona 500. This is just so special. Now we know that at least 70 miles an hour is required. Those presidential limousines, which are built on truck chassis, weigh about 22,000 pounds, will probably not be doing 70 through the 31 degree banking of turns one and two. Now you think when he finishes this lap, is he gonna do a burnout? What kind of horsepower is underneath the hood of that car? This act not only thrilled the audience, but also signaled a significant endorsement of NASCAR's cultural imprint from the White House. Serving as the Grand Marshal, Trump delivered the iconic gentleman, start your engines command to commence the race. This tradition, rich in its legacy, was underscored by the presence of a sitting president for only the second time since George W. Bush in 2004. The reactions were as dynamic as the event itself. While many cheered, embracing the fusion of presidential pomp and race day excitement, others expressed concerns about the politicization of a sports event meant to unite all fans. Adding to the pageantry, Air Force One made a low flyby as chants of USA filled the air a moment that intertwined national pride with sporting fervor. Trump's visit was more than just a ceremonial gesture. It was a strategic move observed in the light of his broad appeal among NASCAR's predominantly conservative fan base. It really is the great American race, and I look at this as patriotism kind of thing. It's incredible. The people are incredible. We love this state, and it's a very exciting. Been here four times before as a civilian, and now I'm uh, in a different capacity. We love NASCAR, and we love the people of NASCAR. Back in 2001. So what is it about NASCAR that you enjoy personally? Bravery of these people. It takes great courage. It's the speed. It's really the technology. You look at what's happened just over the last 10 years with the cars. I love to see it. I love to watch it. Historically, presidents have used sports as a platform to connect with the electorate, from throwing the first pitch in baseball to attending the Super Bowl. Trump's involvement in NASCAR is a continuation of this tradition, but stands out due to its direct engagement and the cultural significance of the Daytona 500. While in 2020, Donald Trump made history, it wasn't the first time that Trump had stopped by the great American race. He was also there for the 1999 kickoff to the NASCAR season and greeted Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, who served as Grand Marshal for the race. And he was also in the pits for one of the most infamous runnings of the Daytona 500 on February 18, 2001. Not many fans had an idea that Trump was present in that race. A recent footage surfacing on the internet shows the future president mingling in the pits on that fateful day. There's uh, Robert Yates, the owner. Yeah, right there's the blonde hair. I don't know if you can see me there or not. Go ahead, everybody. That's Robert Yates right there with the blonde hair. That's Robert Yates right there with the blonde hair.
Obviously, this was long before he became president, but even in 2001, Trump could still draw a crowd as he posed for pictures on pit road ahead of the race. It's an interesting piece of NASCAR history, knowing that the future president who would later serve as Grand Marshal of the race was actually there on the sport's darkest day. That's a day that no NASCAR fan will ever forget, when Dale Earnhardt was tragically killed on the last lap of the race after a crash in turn four. And as it turns out, Donald Trump had a front row seat to it all. Interestingly, some fans also speculated that Trump's presence on the tracks was a curse. What are your thoughts on it? A race that Dale Earnhardt attempted to win all his illustrious career. He won in 1998 and also tragically lost his life at the same track in 2001. For more than a quarter century, Earnhardt had been NASCAR's unapologetic and intimidating hero with a well-hidden heart of gold. February 18th, 2001 was a day that was forever etched in NASCAR history. On that Sunday afternoon, seven-time NASCAR champion and enormously popular 76 race winner, Dale Earnhardt died in the Daytona 500. To this day, countless millions of fans remember that moment with painful clarity. Sterling Marlin bumped Earnhardt in turn four, turning him almost head on into the turn four wall. By then, Michael Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt Jr. were about to finish one two in cars owned by Dale Earnhardt, Inc. Not surprisingly, he had been blocking all challengers to give his two cars a cushion. By the time his cars were nearing the flag, the Intimidator was racing for third. Just as he hit the wall, there was contact from good friend Ken Schrader in the right side door. Earnhardt hit the wall and ricocheted down the banking into the turn four apron. Rescue teams reached Earnhardt within seconds, but he was pronounced dead at a nearby hospital taken by a basilar skull fracture. Sterling got into Earnhardt. We're coming around for the white flag. You got him, Mikey. You got him, man. You got him. Car down. Oh, big trouble. Oh, big wreck right behind him. I just hope Dale's OK. You OK? You OK? Saw the crash and saw the car sitting over there and saw the ambulances and everything. And it just, it, you know, looked really dramatized and really dramatic looking, you know, and it just uh, looked odd. This is undoubtedly one of the toughest announcements that I've ever personally had to make. Uh, but after the accident and turn four at the end of the Daytona 500, we've lost Dale Earnhardt. NASCAR had lost its greatest driver. The tragic accident sent shockwaves through the racing world and prompted NASCAR to reevaluate its safety standards. NASCAR began upgrading its safety standards, mandating head and neck restraint devices, development with the University of Nebraska of soft walls and ultimately, the safety-focused car of tomorrow. There hasn't been an on-track death since Earnhardt's. In the wake of Earnhardt's death, NASCAR mandated the use of head and neck restraints, revolutionizing driver safety in the sport. While the loss of Earnhardt was devastating, his legacy lives on in the countless lives saved by the safety measures implemented in his honor. The unfortunate passings paint a grim picture of how the early 2000s were a year of heartbreak and how they changed NASCAR forever. And there you have it, fans, Donald Trump's journey with NASCAR. As the engines roared and the race commenced, the 2020 Daytona 500 will be remembered, not just for its high-speed thrills, but for its vivid illustration of the blend between American leadership and sports. What are your thoughts on political figures participating in such public sporting events? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, keep the conversation going on Lucky Dog on Track.